डॉक्टर सुरेश प्लीज या थैंक्स फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी थैंक्स फॉर द एसीपी इंडिया चैप्टर फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस टॉक एंड पर्टिकुलरली डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास मूर्ति फॉर कॉलिंग मी फॉर दिस टॉक एंड नाइस वर्ड्स ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन फ्रॉम माय चेयर पर्संस आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल थैंक्स ऑल्सो या फाइन थैंक्स सो दिस इज मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट थिंग वी नीड टू डिसाइड बिफोर वी टॉक ओके फाइन सो आई विल कीप माय टाइम लिटिल रियली बिकॉज़ आई नो वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम before that my disclosures i don't have any shares in any of the drug manufacturers or antibiotic companies people thought infectious disease made huge money in 2020 in fact 32% of infectious disease doctors earning has come down in 2020 i belong to one in 32% and second thing i'm going to discuss about mild moderate and severe but the topic is a huge one but the time is 15 to 20 minutes that's a big challenge for me that's my disclosure today so straight away i begin with the case here 62 year old female type 2 diabetes fever dysuria loin pain of four days durations on examinations febrile loin tenderness was noticed past medical history similar episodes in the past last 3 months it's going on twice in the last 3 months urine routine showed lot of pustules creatinine is now 2 urine culture is growing e coli i have shown only the sensitive antibiotics rest of the antibiotics what do you think is resistant nitrofurantoin is sensitive Phosphomycin is sensitive, colistin is sensitive, ceftazidine AV bactam that is sensitive, cas AV we call. And ultrasound showed perinephric standing. Please participants can go ahead and vote so that we can see how many discussions we can happen at the end. What antibiotic would you start for these patients? Nitrofurantoin, phosphomycin, colistin, cas AV or refer to me at Apollo Hospitals what I can do now. So please go ahead and vote. I'll give a minute before I go discuss about this case. Please go ahead. Okay. So my objective is why this talk. I'm going to do lot of steps, five steps, how to choose antibiotics. I'm giving you going to give tips also how to choose antibiotic. I'll summarize and way forward I'm going to discuss. But as far as antibiotic selection is concerned, there is no shortcut. You cannot cut copy paste to your senior, or you cannot cut copy paste to your professor's antibiotic for your patients. That is the bottom line. There is no shortcut. We need to go properly. The steps and tips should be followed. Why? Why I am giving this talk? Seventy percent of the patients receive antibiotic each day. That is mostly unnecessary. Thirty to sixty percent is basically because of abuse of antibiotic. That is not because of use of antibiotic. Abuse of antibiotics. depending upon what setting you are using it that's most important thing people are asking why why you are talking about antibiotic selection why is a big deal if you see my left co- left column the child presented with severe necrotizing fasciitis in 1940 they tried all interventions the child has not improved the child received penicillin penicillin just came hot into the market they start using the penicillin with penicillin of 5 days the child turned like a queen she lived up to the age of 90 gave a famous interview in 2008 penicillin saved my life for 85 years this is the impact of antibiotics this gave confidence to the world war soldiers to go and fight in world war 1 there is no penicillin world war 2 whatever injury you are going to sustain in the war antibiotic is there you are going back home so go and fight so lot of antibiotic came into the market 1940s and 1960 in fact the life expectancy of the human mankind went by 7 years no other interventions improved the life span within a short span of 30 years your hygiene your vaccines everything improved the life expectancy but took long time but 7 years within 30 years is a miracle that gave the confidence or that gave lot of false confidence to the us surgeon general he told the us general assembly there is no need for speciality of infectious disease no need for further antibiotic no need for id infectious disease close the chapter that is why in india they not started the chapter till 19 2009 to me what happened lot of reluctancy antibiotic inventions and research stopped coming up but same time people start using whatever antibiotic came into the market they start abusing or using it finally the anti- bacteria start taking revenge on us the revenge started there is no research there is no new molecule coming into the market ultimately the bacteria start taking revenge on us so what happened to the revenge we do not know what is happening in the community antibiotic resistance has gone up for example the case what i shown urinary tract infections previously urinary tract infections means we need to go and take one dose of norfloxacin but now norfloxacin is not working 
even your imipinum meropinum is not working so this is a status we are living in and facebook wall street journal the physician from uk writing indian physician does not know how to treat uti indian physician does not know how to treat antibiotic resistance they are abusing antibiotics this is given by us physician a uk physician in wall street journal and this is a reality pakistan what happens salmonella typhi is resistant to ceftriaxone so they are using meropinum for treating salmonella typhi what happened to the india colistin resistance is emerging once bacteria become resistant even in a higher hospital specialist like id is available icu is available all modern facility available but the patient is not going back home if you see the last column dead 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 why it is happening because antibiotic resistance kills the patient antibiotic resistance brought your country's name down that is why we are doing antibiotic talk how to do antibiotic selections so my first step today before write an antibiotic write the diagnosis write the diagnosis that's most important thing unless you write the diagnosis you never write an antibiotic so before ink for antibiotic ink for the diagnosis before you write an antibiotic write the diagnosis first step how to write the diagnosis at the initial step we need to make a syndrome presence of fever headache seizures loss of consciousness or some weakness meningitis meningoencephalitis fever cough shortness of breath pneumonia syndrome fever dysuria lower abdominal pain urgency urinary tract infections fever lower abdominal pain gastroenter diarrhea dysentery gastroenteritis fever swelling redness cellulitis make some syndromic diagnosis if you make a syndromic diagnosis then think about the step 3 for example uri if you write an uri don't write antibiotics why uri is caused by mostly by virus if you write urinary tract infections we need to send appropriate sample and start antibiotic that's step number 3 step number 1 write the diagnosis step 2 make a syndromic diagnosis step 3 certain syndrome does not require antibiotics certain syndrome does not require antibiotic whether it's a mild infections moderate or severe certain syndrome even if it is a severe uri severe throat pain not able to speak so much of hoarseness no need for antibiotic keep in mind that is most important thing then step 4 is what necessary investigations if you start some empirical antibiotic try to confirm it if you think malaria the diagnosis is not clinical malaria the diagnosis should be peripheral smear so don't write anti malarial without confirmations if it is a typhoid send blood cultures no role for white all if you want you can go with eosinophilia start blood culture means we need to start send the culture start appropriate antibiotic then script typhus means script typhus elisa but we need to wait for 5 to 7 days leptospirosis no pcr is available you can do on day 2 day 3 otherwise wait for serological test so we need to know if you think acute gastroenteritis previously people treat with antibiotic but now lot of pcr panel is available the pcr panel will find out what organism for example fever cough shortness of breath pneumonia panel that will detect sars cov 2 also this is called respiratory panel viruses it will detect influenza this will detect sars cov 2 this will detect bacteria like strep pneumoniae so if you do the panel within 1 hour you can get the answer if the panel shows it is virus there is no need for antibiotic if the panel shows bacteria treat with antibiotic otherwise go with clinical acumen so the step number 4 try to confirm your empirical therapy with definite therapy do all necessary investigation not all investigations necessary investigations we need to do step number 5 once you start an antibiotic always write the expiry date always write the expiry date when you are going to stop when you are going to stop that is more important if you are starting an antibiotic that's easy but writing the expiry date surgical prophylaxis means only one dose surgical prophylaxis means only one dose don't write more than one dose of antibiotic one hour before surgery stop it similarly for most of the infections the duration has been coming down community acquired pneumonia 3 to 5 days intra abdominal infection sepsis 4 days urinary tract infections 5 to 7 days presence of blood like e coli in the blood 5 to 7 days even for tb pulmonary tb sensory tb people are trying 4 months therapy mdr tb 6 months therapy the duration is coming down except few infections septic arthritis infective endocarditis abscess meningitis we need to treat little longer otherwise most of the infection the thumb rule is 5 to 7 days don't overshoot don't overshoot treating short is sweet for antibiotic 
So step one, write the diagnosis. Step two, write the syndrome. Step three, most of the syndrome does not require antibiotics. Step four, try to prove your syndrome with appropriate tests. Step five, once you start the antibiotics, stop. Stop at the earliest. Tip one. So what should be the tip? First, assess the severity. The severity is most important thing. When the patient is sick, shocky in ICU, we need to make a syndromic diagnosis, send appropriate sample, start antibiotic, till the confirmations. But when the patient is stable in OP, when the patient diagnosis is URA, there is no need for antibiotic. That is most important step. Step two, we need to do repeated examinations. One examinations will not identify the diagnosis. Do the repeated examinations, daily examinations. Once you have written an antibiotic, without knowing the diagnosis, try to make a repeated examinations to find out where is the problem, what is the syndrome, whether my syndrome is correct or not. Do the repeated examinations. Tip number three is most important. The antibiotic selection depends upon the spectrum. It is not by your previous previous uh, person who written an antibiotic. For example, if you start if you start ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin has got no streptococcal cover. Strepto ciprofloxacin. On the other hand, levofloxacin has got streptococcal cover. Nitrofrontine is a good drug for lower UTI. It is not an upper UTI drug. So we need to know the spectrum. Third generation cephalosporins has got good gram negative cover. First generation, second generation cephalosporin like cefuroxime has got good respiratory or gram positive cover. Similarly, amoxicillin clavinic acid has got anaerobic cover. Once you write amox clave, there is no need for metronidazole. Similarly, if you write piperacillin tesobactam, there is no need for um, metronidazole. If you are using imipenem, meropenem, there is no need for metronidazole, except few anaerobic bacteria that is resistant to these antibiotics. So we need to know the spectrum of antibiotic. Where is the gap? Cholestin is a good antibiotic for most of the gram negative, but resistant gram negative. Not like your other common gram negative, like proteus or serratia or even buckled area. It is not a good drug. So think about it. Where is the spectrum is missing out? That is that is the point we need to decide. Then dose of antibiotic. Pediatricians are good. They go by dosing based upon the body weight. Post on the body weight, they are using the dose. That's most important step. So if you want to use ciprofloxacin, 750 milligram BD. Suffixi means 400 milligram BD. And whether the tissue will reach or not, pharmacokinetics. Nitrofurantine is a good drug for lower UTI, not for upper UTI. So think about it, whether the antibiotic will reach the kidney or not. So in lab, nitrofurantine will work. In real life, nitrofurantine will not reach the kidney. It will not reach the prostate. That is called pharmacokinetics. Amoxicillin will not penetrate the brain that much. Ampicillin will penetrate the brain. <coughs> then we need to know the side effects of the drug. People are using, orthopedic surgeons are using linozolate for four to six weeks. But linozolate will cause black declaration of tongue, anemia, paresthesias can happen. So this is the tip number four. Then I told earlier, salmonella typhi, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin is not working, both in India and Pakistan. But now Pakistan, ceftriaxin is also not working. Cefixime is also not working. Even in India, it is happening now. So we can't use cefixime because the resistance is emerging now. We are still using it. But in 2024, 2025, maybe next ACP talk, maybe the ciprofloxacin, suffix same resistant typhoid may emerge. Previously, when a patient comes to emergency, somebody calls me, my daughter picks up the phone and tells one gram of meropenem, one gram of vancomycin. But now meropenem and vancomycin is not working. The resistance of meropenem in 2003, only 1%. 2013, it is almost 50%. That is a problem with meropenem. So in summary, middle infection, mild infections, Try to make a syndrome. If the syndrome is viral, don't give antibiotics. Moderate infections, again, try to make a syndrome. If the syndrome does not want antibiotic, patient is stable, make the culture diagnosis, then we can stop. Severe infections, start antibiotic. Try to stop the antibiotic at the earliest. Try to stop the antibiotic at the earliest. I'll show my case what happened to this case. So this person has got syndrome of UTI, pyelonephritis, presence of fever, chills and rigor, along with Along with the patient has got loin pain and loin tenderness, perinephric standing. Nitrofrontine is sensitive, but nitrofrontine pharmacokinetics, it will go to the bladder. The infection is present in the kidney. So nitrofrontine sensitive, I can't use it. Creatine is two. I can't use cholestin. Further kidney injury can happen. Phosphomycin, yes, IV phosphomycin, not oral phosphomycin, or cassavy, we can use it. So depending upon the organisms, 
depending upon the narrower spectrum, we can choose and use it. That's most important thing. Another OP case, 24-year-old male, fever of four days durations, sore throat four days, cough, dry cough. Examination by stable patient. So first step, stable or not stable? Stable. What is an antibiotic you want to start for these patients? Please go ahead and vote so that we can discuss at the end. How many want to start antibiotic for this patient? Please vote. Okay, I can go and switch. So here the syndrome is acute pharyngitis, presence of fever, cough, sore throat, pharyngitis or pharyngolaryngitis. What causes pharyngitis? 85% to 90% is virus. Only one bacteria, group A, beta, hemolytic, streptococci. How to differentiate? Use a CENTA criteria. Presence of high fever, tender node, purulent exudate, along with absence of cough, bacteria is possible. Presence of cough, low-grade fever, only erythema, no nodes, probably viral. Or if you want to make a syndrome, send a syndromic panel, respiratory virus panel, that will give the answer, virus versus bacteria. What hand Antibiotic, no antibiotic. But in real life scenario, people write viral fever, people write COVID, still write azithromycin, doxycycline. If you do an outpatient audit, people will vote here like, I don't write antibiotic. If I do the antibiotic prescriptions audit of you people, clearly shows people are using antibiotic. Acithromycin, doxycycline, amoxicillin, clavonic acid, all sorts of antibiotic. Diagnosis, viral fever. Once you write viral fever, write antibiotic is a crime to me. It's a crime to me. So what is the way forward? Unfortunately, infectious disease was not taught in the medical school curriculum. So we need to have infectious disease specialists. If you want, we can have through telemedicines, the advent of COVID telemedicines and telehealth facilities coming up. So any issues or any sorting out problem, ID specialist is available. Otherwise, if you want to learn hands-on infectious disease training, how we are practicing, we are not preaching. If you come and round with us, we see our practice. If I go for rounds, my practice is to stop the antibiotics. 10 consultations I see today, Six or seven, I stop antibiotics. That is my practice. People think ID will write antibiotic. ID will stop the antibiotics. We need to have a proper training. I think ACP should take an initiative. American College of Physicians India chapter to take initiative to train the physicians, to train the young guns, residents, ID training. We are happy to provide the support. We are happy to try to raise the support. So those who are interested in learn hands-on training, yes, please follow me either Twitter or the WhatsApp. I can give the number. You can please follow me or best of ID conference is happening this year or probably next year because we are not sure about the COVID pattern. So we are waiting for some more time to do hands-on training instead of hybrid. We are planning to a virtual versus hybrid. The confusion is going on. So we can show you how to, how to write the prescriptions, get hands-on experience. Thanks for the wonderful opportunity. I'm happy to take a couple of questions. Thank you.